Hello, this is Jason from Technology Services, and today we're going to talk about laptop care. Most of the reasons that we have issues with laptops is because we forget we have a laptop with us. We get into a rush, we get into a hurry, we forget that we have things next to us, and stuff happens. And the laptop gets damaged or broken or stops working. So this presentation is to help you with a couple little tips, things not to do and things to do uh, to help you with your laptop care. So first, let's start off with the biggest one. Everybody knows this. Keep food and drink away from your laptop. No matter how many times we say this, we get spills. We get all kinds of spills, coffee spills, water spills, Gatorade spills, other beverage spills. Please, please keep the beverages away from the laptops. Basically what happens is when the liquid gets into the laptop, all of the circuits come together and it basically fries the motherboard. There's no way of getting back from this type of uh, an issue. The laptop is basically done. Um, now, there are things that we can do to recover data, but for the most part, the laptop is toast. There's nothing left of it. Um, so please, please keep the food, keep the drink away from the laptop. The other thing that we see is people stacking on top of laptops. They'll put books on top of it. They'll put everything on top and then start to move. Remember, these laptop cases are not overly strong. They're not made out of titanium. The newer laptops tend to be less strong. Uh, so as you continue to stack stuff on it, it actually compresses and pushes the circuits together that are not supposed to be pushed together and it causes short circuits. So please, please do not stack anything on top of laptops. This actually hurts it. Another big issue that we see, especially with students, is that they will put things on their keyboards like earbuds, headsets, pencils, pens, erasers, you name it, they put it on top. Even papers can do this if you have a, a thick enough stack. And when you close the lid, inevitably it cracks the screen in some shape or form. Um, you don't see a physical like glass crack on the laptop, um, you see other things on the laptop, like little lines or the miscoloring of the of the, the screen. These are all cracks. So please, please do not put anything on the keyboard because a lot of times we forget, and then we slam the lid shut, and all of a sudden we have a cracked screen. Another thing that you want to be very careful of. Um, is leaving your laptop in your car overnight. Should never, never do that, especially in cold weather. The cold weather does different things to the screen. So you wanna be very, very careful. Do not leave your laptop in your car overnight. Um, also, we've had uh, one or two thefts where people have left their laptops in the car overnight. Someone saw it, broke into the car, stole the laptop. So please do not do that. Actually become too hot, overheats the laptop, can actually melt components inside the laptop. So please never leave your laptop in direct sunlight or in a very heated area. Um, and again, laptops are not meant for extreme areas. Although this picture is very funny, it's a laptop inside of a microwave. You know, we often joke with our students when they come to us and say, oh, my laptop's frozen. We often say, have you tried to defrost it in the microwave for a couple minutes? 
Um, they look at us kind of weird. It's funny. Um, but in all seriousness, uh, keeping a laptop away from a microwave or a refrigerator or even a stove, um, these appliances have magnets in them, large magnets. And in some laptops, these magnets can do a tremendous amount of damage. So you want to keep your laptops away from kitchen appliances and other appliances that may have large magnets in them. Um, and in some respects, some of the newer TVs also have uh, larger magnets in them. So you want to try to keep your laptop away from them as much as you can. The other thing, cords. We have all kinds of stories that I can share with you about cords. So someone is in their living room, they put it on an end table, the cord is stretched across the room, they go up to get a drink or do something, they forget about the cord, they trip over the cord. When they trip over the cord, the laptop goes flying through the air and it never ends in a good result. So please, please be aware of how you're plugging it in. We often tell people, if you're going to do work at home, select a station that is safe, uh, where you can plug it in. There's no tripping hazards. Uh, it's away from food, things of that nature, uh, When if you intend to work from home. Also, when you're plugging and unplugging, uh, don't grab the cord from quite a ways away from the plug and yank on it. That actually loosens uh, the wires that are inside the cord. Uh, grab the plug area and gently pull it out. Again, just trying to save the, the life of the cord. So be, be very, very gentle with the power cord on some of these laptops. Also with all of your plugins, you know, don't forget when you're finished with your laptop, make sure you unplug all of your USBs and your um, all of your cords, your power cord, whatever you're not using on your laptop, you should always unplug it. Because a lot of times what we've experienced is people forgot that they had their phone plugged into their laptop or they had a thumb drive plugged into their laptop and they either shoved it into their bag or dropped it and it actually bent the port or actually pried the port off of the motherboard. Um, so we've seen a lot of damage with that. So don't forget about those uh, cords that you plug in or any of those other um, SD cards or anything like that. And remember, again, be very gentle with those cords. Um, they are making the cords smaller and thinner. So as more wear and tear you put on those cords, uh, the more likely they are to short out. So you want to be very, very careful with that. So I've said a lot of things that you shouldn't do. Let's talk a little bit about the things that you should do. So first of all, let's talk about cleaning your laptop. This comes up quite a bit. You should never spray directly on your laptop. You should never pour water directly on your laptop. My recommendation is to spray a cloth and make a cloth lightly damp and then use that cloth and wipe off your screen, wipe off your keyboard. Now notice in this particular picture, the laptop is off. I highly recommend turning the laptop off, shutting it down, and then spraying the cloth, wiping the screen down, and wiping the keyboard down. You wanna do this fairly regularly. Um, the reason that I say that, if you eat next to your laptop, which again, I don't recommend, but you'll get crumbs, you'll get dust underneath the keys. And that will also cause you problems with keys sticking or actually uh, becoming lodged and stuck um, and they won't function properly. So when you clean your laptop, my recommendation is take some type of a mild cleanser, spray it on a cloth first, wipe down the screen, wipe down the keyboard. If you're at school, uh, we have, uh, we've been given instructions and shown how to use the Rejuvenol, the number 16 cleanser. So feel free to use a spray of that uh, Rejuvenol onto a cloth. And a lot of times I recommend using a micro cloth. It's a very, very soft cloth that doesn't scratch the screen or cause anything or um, any damage to the laptop itself. 
Um, some of the other cloths you have to be careful of that may be a little harsh on the screen, but also might leave uh, little microfibers as well. You know, those little bits and pieces of cloth um, on your keyboard as you wipe it off. So that's just something to keep in mind. The other thing is, you know, how do we keep a backpack or how do we keep the laptop safe when we're carrying it from place to place? And there's laptop bags and laptop sleeves. There's book bags like this one um, that's pictured here. The reason that I chose this one, if you look at this particular book bag for the backpack or for the laptop, you'll notice it has its own sleeve that's dedicated for a laptop. It has extra padding. It's on the interior. So the nice thing about this, it provides a little extra protection for the laptop, but also notice where the water bottle is. A lot of times we, we do carry around a water bottle, but the water bottle is in a separate compartment from the laptop. It's on the outside of the book bag. Now we've had instances where people will put the laptop and the bottle of water in the same compartment and the lid has actually come off of the bottle and the water leaked into the bag, it got the laptop wet and the laptop was ruined. So a book bag like this provides a little extra protection because the bottle is on the outside. So if anything does happen, chances are the water leaks on the outside and not as much inside protecting and saving the laptop. The other thing that I wanna mention is, you know, carrying the laptop. Notice the picture on the left. This guy is carrying the laptop with two hands. Um, I've seen a lot of people grab it by the screen. That hurts the hinges. The hinges will come undone with that. So be very careful, always carry with two hands. The other option is like in the upper right, uh, actually closing the laptop and just tucking it under your arm for extra protection. The other nice thing that you should think about is trying to conserve your battery. So turning off anything that you're not using. Um, one thing is Bluetooth. Bluetooth is generally turned on by default. You wanna turn that off, get, save yourself some battery life. And there's some other apps that you can turn off or some other services that you can turn off, but just be aware of that. I just wanted to kind of throw that out because when we're talking about um, batteries, we want to conserve battery life. A lot of times people ask, you know, should I leave it plugged in? Um, should I unplug it from time to time? Well, I read on Dell's site, their recommendation is to fully charge the battery to 100%. Once the battery has reached 100%, unplug it, use the battery, use the laptop until the battery is under 50%. Once the battery is under 50%, you can wait till it goes completely dead or somewhere under 50%, then plug it in, charge it up to 100%, unplug it, and just follow the same procedure. Now, when you're plugging in, remember, you probably should have a surge protector. We've had a lot of instances where a house has had a brownout or um, a power outage or something like that, and it actually... Um, ruin the power cord because of a power surge that came through the outlet. So that's something to be aware of as well, something to consider. Also, most laptops have um, a vent on them somewhere. And you wanna be very, very aware of this. You don't wanna clog that vent up because laptop processors do get very, very hot and this can ruin in the inside of the laptop. It can also uh, shut down the laptop. If the laptop gets too hot, it'll shut down on you. So that's something to be aware of where your vents are. And this is also really important when you're doing work. You wanna have those vents open and available because if you put a laptop actually on your lap and that's where the vent is, you're gonna get really, really warm really quick. The other thing is when you're charging your laptop, you don't wanna set your laptop on a couch or a blanket or something like that where that will actually clog the, uh, the vent. The laptop will overheat and will damage it over time. And the last little tip I have for you is remember to shut down. You should always shut down before you're carrying your laptop from place to place. You should shut down at the end of the day. What shutting down does is it kind of refreshes your laptop. It takes everything that you have done, all the changes you've made to your laptop, it writes it to the Windows registry. 
If you miss one of those, this is when your laptop becomes corrupted, you get the blue screen, all kinds of bad things happen. And when I say shut down, I don't mean simply closing the lid. Closing the lid does not shut down your laptop. It only puts it in sleep mode. And if you go too many sleep modes without shutting down, again, that could cause you your blue screen issues. It can also cause you to have other uh, basically corruption problems later down the road. So shutting down actually means going to the start button, button hitting the power, selecting shutdown, and let it shut down all the way. Once all of the lights are off, then you can close your lid and you're done for storage or for whatever you need to do. So I hope these tips have helped you out a little bit. I wanna thank you for paying attention, for tuning in to this video, and I hope it helps. Thanks again and have a great day.